Okay, I had a request on how to remove the background from an object. And so I have a couple examples here. There's several different ways you can go about doing this. Um, these are already done down here. Uh, you can see I'll put a green box behind them just so you can see. These are actually extracted from their backgrounds. Um, there's there's a couple ways you can do it. This is a JPEG. You can simply go in something like this. The way I got this was I went to uh, bitmap vectorize BZA and that just creates my vector shape right there. Change the color so you can see it. I'm going to group it because I know there's at least one loose piece right there in his nose. So, you know, there's another one. That's one way you can do it. Something else you can do, let me zoom in on this, is uh, you can go to bitmap, make transparent, and select this area and you'll get the little classic marching ants and then if you were to click OK that would work but I'm gonna hang off and I'm gonna do that on a copy hold control to copy something and zoom to that and I'm gonna do that on there now bitmap make transparent select the area that I want and then select OK now one difference here is I still have a square object. Basically, it, you've just added a transparency to your uh, to your JPEG. And if I put a green box behind it, you'll see how this has happened. Uh, move that to the bottom. So we missed an area. How do we get that area? Well, let me pull this out and put another copy here and we're gonna do this again bitmap make transparent select this area we want to make sure we get this area this time so I'm gonna hold shift and I get the little plus sign by my cursor and select that and now when I select OK and you can select the tolerance right here in your design central design central is very important I'll always look at it whenever you have a tool selected if you're new to the program uh, so click OK and now we can see that we have that. Now if I try to cut that on my cutter it's not going to cut. If I want to print it that's what I would get. I would have no background there and it would print just the area. Uh, some ways you can work with that you can um, you can go to effects and go to contour cut. This is kind of a little cheat way I've done this and put your contour right at zero alright now when I select it instead of that square shape I essentially have a silhouette and I've got that sitting over this green box so if I select these two together and then hit remove overlap up here in my toolbox if you can see my mouse remove overlap it brought this to the front let's push it to the back doesn't always work good when you're using a transparency oh I know why back up here back up a little further let's take that contour cut off what I did wrong was I need to go effects contour cut with holes see it didn't cut in here I can zoom into it so you can see there's no thin gray line in there but if I hit with holes I don't know how well it shows up on the video but now there is and we'll hit OK now I'll hit these two together select them both go remove overlap and it still came back that's really odd like I say uh, transparencies are weird when you're doing this with JPEGs but what's happened is it's actually cut that shape out for us so sometimes if I need to get a solid shape of an object that's how I'll do it because at that point I can just place that you know let me make this a different color move it to the bottom do the same trick, select the two, remove overlap, move this back to the bottom so we can see the other one here. Just delete these. But now I have this shape here 
that matches this. So, you know, you, that comes in handy at times without going into long explanations. So that's that's a one way that you can you know get rid of backgrounds uh, is by making transparent and doing a BZA. Both of those work very well. Now <clears throat> this right here is a fire truck that I recently did the graphics on, and. I thought this would be good to kind of show you another way of doing it which is to mask it. I can't just select the background here to make transparent because it's just too busy. There's too much going on and the colors are too similar. We've got the silver here of the rails blending in with the white van back here. So that wouldn't work. So what you need to do is you have to actually make a mask for it. Now Photoshop, uh, especially the new one, will do a fairly decent job of removing background and selecting just the areas you want but I'll be honest I have never seen a, a Photoshop or an automatic tool extract an object as cleanly as building a mask and making a good mask is really just the best way to do it so you have to go over here in your tools and select your pen tool and a nice choose a nice contrasting color I like just this neon green and what I do is I zoom all the way in to where you know depending on how detailed I want it and I start penning out a shape and I realize on the video you're not going to be able to see this very well but I'm going to start adding points here and drawing a line with this and my video you know sometimes you get these weird little lines in your video as it goes you can clear those up by hitting F5 which basically redraws everything on the screen and gets rid of those. So I'm just tracing the edges of this staying just inside the the last pixels in the object and you would go around the entire object in this manner tracing until you get a shape. And so right now I'm just going around the hood And um, you got to watch, it gets a little tricky sometimes when the colors blend together like right through here. And you got to be a little creative at times and kind of fill the blanks in with what you know should be there. You know, take as short a steps as you need. If a long step will work, that's great. But you want to really kind of follow the shape a little bit. And I'm not going to go around the whole vehicle. I'm just going to kind of give you an idea here. You know, I mean, you see, from here I would go up and around the window and trace the whole design. And for now, I'm just going to shortcut back to to where I was, to where I started, excuse me, uh, zoom out. And I'm just going to kind of, for those that don't know how this tool works, you're drawing a line. And as the line comes around and gets back to its initial point, it will close and make a solid shape. So when I go back here, we get the option to close path, and we get a shape. <clears throat> now that shape is comprised of straight lines, the way I did it. You can go in here as you set it, and adjust points, and pull things out, and hold the shift button, and the control buttons, and do a few things like that. But really, I'm just giving you my experience, working guy's experience, this works. Because now what you do is you just go back and clean up your edges. So once you've got it selected and shaped, I'm just going to straighten out this edge here because again if I zoom way in there we can see this is just straight lines and straight lines would not look good on something at the scale that I work which is great big you know I mean I do billboards at times so we want to clean those up and the quality of your your extraction is going to come down to how clean you make these things. So you, now when I select my um, optimize by curve tool you can see all the points line up you can see how crooked they are and so you just select a couple points and it's going to try and figure out a path and you, ha you, you learn to use this tool you learn what works good and set up you know just clean up those edges it's going to actually put a curve to everything and then hit the check mark or enter and see how that just shaped that off real nice. You can make little minor corrections in your shape here. And you go around the whole thing once you get that done. 
See, so yeah, that's a little crooked there, so I can bring this handle back here and this one here, and it just really makes it nice and clean. So once you've gone around the whole thing, let me zoom to this, you're going to end up with a shape of the vehicle, of what you want to mask. Things to keep in mind are also areas like this where there's actually sky behind there. And if you look at this one here, you'll see that area it has been removed and there's the color behind it or nothing behind it. So you're going around this whole thing, you get it all shaped out and you end up with something that looks like, as I move this to the bottom, that. The green. Ignore this little blue piece. <laughs> The green shape is what you end up with. Now I haven't gone around and smoothed all the curves on this because I'm just using this to show what's going on. But once you get your basic shape, at that point you can just move it straight to the bottom. Don't slide it around left, right, up, down, nothing like that. Just move it straight to the bottom of the stack. Shift, page down. And now you can go back in and concentrate on these little areas like there and make a shape to fit it. Once you have that, those shapes all done, then take and push this to the bottom and a lot of times I'll copy it and move it off to the side so as not to disturb what I'm working on and you can move the whole piece or hold shift and deselect part of it but I'm going to copy this over here and now actually no I'm, I apologize we don't want to do that just want to select everything here and do cut out and then select your background image select your mask that you've now created. This is going to be your mask. Right click on it and hit mask. And that's how you do it. And it's time consuming to do it good. And yes, again, there are tools that will do it much faster, but when you want something that's very high quality, that doesn't have any fuzziness around the edges, uh, any smudges, doesn't miss anything, your best way is always going to be to mask it. So there's you some options. See what you think.